Before I tell my story today, I'd like to read two passages of Scripture, one very well known from John's Gospel, chapter 1, verses 11 and 12, where we read, He came to his own, and his own, that is the Jewish people, did not receive him. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, even to those who believe in his name. But there's an interesting verse when Paul was preaching at Mars Hill at the Areopagus, and speaking to these pagans, he says to them that God has made from one blood every nation. And he goes on to say in verse 27, so that they should seek the Lord in the hope that they might grope for him and find him, though he is not far from every one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as also some of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. And he goes on to discuss the character, the nature of God, that God obviously is not made out of silver and gold or shaped by art or man's devising, because obviously we're not. And if we came from God, then God obviously is a sentient being as we are. Two poets who came along a little earlier than the Apostle Paul, Aratus wrote a poem called Phenomena, and Cleanthus wrote a hymn to Jupiter. And both of them use this particular phrase, for we are also his offspring. Uh, these are two different words, of course. The word used in John 1, 11 and 12, the word technon is the word for actual birth children. Whereas in Acts 17, the word genos, from which we get our word kin or genus, is the word offspring. And so the idea that Paul is using here is that the life of God was necessary in issuing forth the human race. God breathed into man the breath of life and man became a living soul. So in that sense, we are the offspring of God. We were made in his likeness. However, what the Lord Jesus is being referred to in John 1 when he gives people the right to become children of God, this is something different entirely. This is receiving eternal life, receiving the very life of God. This story is very close to home. It had to do with the death of my sister-in-law. My brother Bill lost his wife when she was just 35 years of age, leaving three children behind. It was a very difficult time. But one of the things that encouraged Bill, and certainly encouraged all of us, occurred actually at the funeral. After the funeral proper was over, I was riding in one of the funeral cars with one of the funeral directors. As we traveled, it was quite a distance from the funeral home up to the gravesite, and as we rode along, he responded to me by saying, wow, that really makes you think, doesn't it? And I think the idea was that uh, we don't go in order. We expect old people to die, but this was a very young woman, and he was rather shocked by it. And so this was his response. It really makes you think, doesn't it? And I responded, yes, it, it makes you think about heaven, doesn't it? And he said, it, it certainly does. I said, are you going to be in heaven someday? He said, well, I certainly hope so. I said, you hope so? You only hope so? Like, this is forever, man. What do you mean you hope so? He said, okay, okay, I, I know I'm going to be in heaven. I said, well, I'm very glad to hear that. On what basis? Well, he said, because I'm a child of God. I said, you are? Put her there. And I put out my hand to shake his. And he rather dubiously shook my hand. And I said, now, tell me, how did you become a child of God? Well, he said, we're all the children of God. That's what they teach us at our church. I said, well, now, if the Bible disagreed with what they teach at your church, who would you believe? Well, he said, I would believe the Bible. And I said, that's excellent. Let me quote these verses to you. And I quoted to him John chapter 1, verses 11 and 12. 
that the children of God are those who by faith have received the Lord Jesus. So I said, I think the next question is rather obvious, isn't it? When was the time in your life when you personally received the Lord Jesus as your Savior? He grew very sober and for a minute or two didn't say anything. And then he said, do you suppose this is one of the reasons for the funeral today? I think maybe it is, I said. He said, well, could you explain to me how you received the Lord Jesus? He said, I've never heard this before. And as we traveled up, I very slowly and carefully went through the gospel with him. And um, we arrived at the gravesite. Got out of the car and we went over and uh, had a few words to say and, and sang a hymn of triumph. I always loved to sing there at the, at the graveside. I like the devil to know he didn't win this one. That uh, we triumph in our Lord Jesus, even in these difficult situations. Well, when we finished, I made my way back and... He was standing, leaning against the hearse, and, and I went up to him and I said, Well, after all this, I sure hope I'm going to meet you in heaven. And he said, Oh, you'll meet me in heaven. I said, On what basis? Well, he said, I'm a child of God. I said, You are? When did that happen? He said, Standing right here. By simple faith, he had received the Lord Jesus. And you know, very often Christians lose loved ones and uh, it's hard on us. We don't lose them in the sense that we don't know where they are. Of course we do. We know exactly where they are. They're absent from the body and present with the Lord. But we lose their companionship for a while. And, and sometimes Christians live a very long life and then pass away and others die, it seems, too soon. But you know, the Bible teaches that by life and by death, we can glorify God. And the longer our life, the greater the opportunity to glorify him with our life. But then when death comes, it seems our death can go by hardly without notice. Old people, most of their friends have already passed away. But when a younger person dies, though their life has been shorter, their death has much greater impact. And I wouldn't be surprised that there will be a whole contingent in heaven of those who were saved as a result of the funerals of Christians. And what a day it will be when those of us who had to say goodbye, it seems early, to our loved ones will discover what God did when that corn of wheat fell into the ground and died. And what God has done, not only with the death of his son, but with the death of his saints, for as he says, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of the saints. Well, may God encourage us as we pass through difficult times, losing sometimes little children, how difficult it is to face these issues, but, but to live by faith and to trust in God. He's a good businessman and he doesn't exact that kind of cost without getting a real good return on his investment.